Hello, everybody. This is Taran. I'm the managing director for Future Building Nursing Prep Center, and we are back with the video to explain you guys endocrine disorder SIADH. So students requested this information, and here we present to you. So before I move on, I hope you guys know what SIADH stands for. It's syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. So what does that mean? So in order to understand that, I want to make your life very simple and let's just review diuretic. So what is the meaning of diuretic? I hope you guys know what does Lasix do in your body. So diuretic will usually let the water go out. Diuretic says bye bye. I don't need the water in the body and diuretic will send the water outside. Whereas antidiuretic, as the name suggests, is opposite. So it is going to hold the water inside the body. So, so far, I hope you guys are already clear what is going to happen in SIADH. SIADH hormone is going to hold the water inside the patient's body, causing hemodilution. And I hope you can see this is patient's blood. And now the body is retaining more and more and more water. So I hope you guys can see that. Did you notice? that patient is going into hemodilution, right? Did you see that? Initially, it was very dark. Now, when we keep on adding the water, it is becoming more and more diluted. So this is what is gonna happen in your patient. And this is what we are going to study all in detail. So let's just see and check out our presentation. So in SIADH, there is an excessive production of antidiuretic hormone. And as you know that this is a water holding hormone as a result, what's going to happen, your patient will exhibit water retention and patient will have dilutional hyponatremia, right? So now you have seen that I showed you in the beginning of the video. If you add more water into the blood, what's going to happen? It's going to cause dilution. And as a result, all the electrolytes, including sodium level will start dipping down. So I hope you guys know normal sodium level is 135 to 145. But if we add more water, what's going to happen, the sodium level will start going down. So patient would have low sodium levels in this case. And of course, the serum osmolarity, because you guys know we have added water, automatically all the salt content is going to decrease. So that's what we call as that serum osmolarity will decrease in these patients. If we do not treat this, this can have a serious consequence on the patient and it is going to make the patient sometimes so sick that patient can even have a death if we don't treat those patients in time. But now let's just understand how this works, what's the definition of this and the pathophysiology of this one. So antidiuretic hormone has another name, my friends, and we call it as vasopressin. So you should know that this vasopressin is actually produced in the patient's brain, okay? And in brain, a special area, I hope you guys know hypothalamus. So in hypothalamus, the vasopressin is produced and then this vasopressin is stored in the posterior part of the pituitary. I hope you guys know, pituitary is the master endocrine gland, right? I'm repeating one more time. So vasopressin is produced in hypothalamus and then this goes to the posterior pituitary and posterior pituitary stores this. And so that it says, okay, I'm going to release it whenever it's required, okay? However, in SIADH, there is boom increase in ADH. So this means the hypothalamus, which is the brain, is producing too much ADH. Okay. And then, of course, there is too much production of ADH. Then, of course, what's going to happen is so it's going to go to the pituitary and pituitary is going to release that hormone into the blood because there is an excessive production. Now, you guys know it is holding water inside. So it is going to cause the dilution of the body fluids, resulting in hyponatremia and decreased osmolarity. And when the sodium level decreases, my friends, it's a very dangerous situation. So I hope everybody knows 135 to 145 is the normal one. And if the level falls, I have seen patients, you know, with 120, 125. And that one, you would see that the patient will start presenting with the symptoms of hyponatremia. Right. And this is how I teach my students. This is a trick I'm going to tell you. NA for sodium, right? And N for neuro. So when the sodium level goes down, remember what type of symptoms the patient will present? Neuro symptom. NA for sodium, N for neuro. So when you see those patients, you would see that they are going to start complaining of like headache. And if you don't treat those headaches, patient will start having seizure. 
patient can eventually go into coma and then of course potentially life threatening consequences so that can all happen with siadh increased production i hope that makes sense so far now let's just talk about like students they always ask me that and what's the co- cause of siadh so my friends siadh can be caused now you know that siadh is being produced in hypothalamus in your brain so if the patient if we have any infection meningitis some kind of tumors right traumas and all those things like something wrong in the pituitary that can lead to the increased production of adh that is related to neuro but sometimes some kind of cancers and usually i have seen patients with the the you know the lung carcinomas which is called as lung cancer in simple language they can also have elevated production of siadh and you guys know what's another name of siadh hormone vasopressin right so that can increase and then of course some medication i know it's surprising to the students but some medications can also induce and cause siadh in that one we have ssri and these are all antidepressants carbamazepine vincristine all those medications can also stimulate the release of adh in the patient resulting in syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone all right so let's just talk about the signs and symptoms of hyponatremia or the increased siadh right which is syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone i know i have told you hyponatremia is the big one but of course patient can also have nausea vomiting confusion muscle cramps in severe cases if we don't treat the patient in the early signs then the patient can go into the severe symptoms and patient's hyponatremia like sodium level will become low and low and low and patient can also experience seizures and i hope you guys know seizures is one of the favorite topics in nclux my friends so as a nurse you have to keep an eye on patient's sodium level and also patient's physical findings so that's why your health assessment should be really strong if you want to work in the western nursing right and so in this one of course you will look for because you know hyponatremia sodium is going to affect the brain so what type of assessment you want to do my friends mental health assessment which is neuro assessment on your client you want to check if the patient is presenting with muscle weakness and other neurological deficits and electrolyte imbalance right so those are the things which you want to check now coming to the lab diagnosis so in the lab what we can do is you have to assess the patient's serum sodium level which is 135 and below will indicate that something is wrong and then you would see low serum osmolarity lots of times students they get confused so i explain the simple thing remember this glass which i showed you now this if we keep an adding more and more and more water what's going to happen the things will keep on becoming dilute 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 so as a result now you know in siadh patient is retaining water what's going to happen is patient's osmolarity will keep on becoming low okay now think about it use your common sense now when the body is holding the water what do you think about the urine output urine output is going to be high or urine output is going to be low tell me so the patient's urine output will decrease when the patient's urine output decreases i always tell the students remember that urine output and specific gravity they work opposite so if the patient's urine output will decrease patient's specific gravity will go up okay so this is how we can check the lab diagnosis right so primarily let's just revise you're assessing three values sodium you're checking the osmolarity and then you're also checking the patient's uh, urine output and the specific gravity so in this case you know that the urine output is decreasing so you would usually see that the patient's specific gravity would be more than 1.036 right in these cases this is what i always say to my students like we have to connect the dots you just can't look into the lab value and say oh my gosh okay sodium is low patient is siadh no you have to look into the other lab values other conditions so sometimes patient can have low sodium because of hypothyroidism right adrenal insufficiency they can have renal failures right so all those conditions can also induce all those problems so then we have to figure out like what's happening with the client and then you have to do the differential diagnosis before you move on okay moral of the story now use your common sense you know that patient has siadh patient is retaining fluid when the patient is retaining fluid this means patient is having low sodium level so the first line of treatment my friends we have is we want to correct the sodium in that patient how do doctors they do that so 
we can do a couple of things. You can start with a fluid restriction. So you would see that the doctors will put SIADH patients on a fluid restriction, like 800 to 1000 ml a day. Then you can address the underlying cause. So for example, if you know that the lung cancer is causing and triggering SIADH, then of course, doctors want to treat that underlying cause, right? And let's just say if it's an infection, meningitis, which is inducing it, then doctors need to treat that so that patient automatically gets corrected. And apart from that, my friends, we can always do the sodium correction. So now think about it and tell me what type of fluids do you guys want to give to this patient? Do you want to give them isotonic, hypotonic or hypertonic? So usually if the sodium levels are pretty low, I told you, for example, let's just say normal is 135 to 145. And if the patient's sodium level is so low, then we want to give maybe isotonic, which is 0.9% NaCl. If it's too low, like the sodium level is super low, let's just say somebody is on 118, then doctor might give hypertonic solution. And you should know hypertonic solution means any solution which has more percentage than 0.9, right? So anything I would just say, sometimes doctors can even give 3%, right? NaCl to the patient. If the correction is not getting better, sometimes doctors also recommend oral tablets for like sodium oral tablets to, to be given to the patient. So yes, so patients swallow those pills so that we can correct the sodium. So sodium correction is the number one line of the treatment doctors want to do in those patients. Does that make sense? Because sometimes students have this misconception that if we are holding too much of water, most of the time students, they think, okay, Taran, can we give Lasix when I teach to the students in the classroom? Well, think about it. Like, you know, when you give Lasix, Lasix is not just removing water from the body, but Lasix also remove electrolytes from your body. So do you think that's going to be a good treatment for this patient? Patient already has low sodium. And if you give Lasix on the top of it, I don't think that's a good combination, right? Because you are going to further reduce the sodium. So that's why the first line of treatment is correction of sodium and which can be done. I told you if we can do the fluid restriction on those patients, we can do hypertonic solution to those patients. And sometimes we can give oral tablets plus correcting the underlying cause of that. So now let's just start talk about like more treatment, right? Not just the sodium correction, but sometimes we can do pharmacological interventions too. So in pharmacological interventions, so you can see we can give drugs, which is called as demiclocycline. So in this one, what we can do is it's kind of like a tetracycline antibiotic, but now this has the capability to manage chronic SIADH. And how can? By inducing diabetes insipidus. I'm not gonna go into too much detail of it because they don't ask this much in detail. But moral of the story is we want to promote water excretion. So yes, yeah, sometimes students, they get surprised like, Taran, are you serious? Like, can we use even antibiotic in this case? Yes, but antibiotic here is not being used for infection. But did you get it? We are inducing diabetes insipidus, which is the opposite condition of SIADH. Next, my friends, we have is vasopressin receptor antagonist, right? So in this one, medications like uh, Tolva 10 acts as a vasopressin receptor antagonist and blocking the effect of ADH. So you guys know, if we are already blocking ADH, antidiuretic hormone, which is going to promote what? Secretion of water. So if the water is gonna go outside the body, automatically you will see that the patient will start correcting like you know his, his or her own symptoms right for example the sodium will start getting corrected and i have already talked about it that we can give hypertonic solution to the patients now what are the contraindications because as i said when you guys work here as a nurses like you want to operate at a like a little bit of higher cognitive thinking levels right so think about it if the patient's sodium level is 120 right so, and normal is 135 to 145. Your body has kind of adjusted to the low sodium level. Now, do you want to rapidly, you know, change it? So I'm gonna ask you guys a simple question. I know you guys are watching this video because you're preparing for NCLEX. So now tell me, what is gonna help you prepare and pass your NCLEX? Is it your consistent efforts or you're going to open the books one night before, boom, and then you're gonna pass NCLEX? I know, right? It's consistent, slow efforts, which will give you result. So similarly, we do not want to abruptly correct the sodium too, because the rapid shifts can also cause lots of issues in the problem, right? Because the body is kind of adjusted to that one. So rapid correction of hyponatremia, 
especially with hypertonic saline, carries a risk of osmotic, uh, osmotic demyelination syndrome, which is a serious neurological condition and should be avoided. And of course, my friends, because I'm teaching you guys just the simple basics for NCLEX, I'm not going to go into detail, but when you guys do critical care nursing, neurotrauma uh, specializations, and this is how, you know, we go further extensive in those ones. And of course, medication monitoring. So certain medications, uh, used in SIDH is vasopressin antagonist, which I have already spoken about and talked to you guys before. Now, coming to the nursing intervention, and that's what we do in NCLEX exam, and then in the, of course, in the real nursing setting. So my friends, this foremost thing you want to teach to the patient is, of course, you guys know nurses play a huge role in educating the client. So you want to educate the patient on the importance of fluid restriction. I know I have worked with those patients. Sometimes, you know, they're very agitated. They want to drink, right? So you won't believe sometimes, you know, because they have their experience in dryness because we are restricting their fluid. Sometimes we even give them candy, like, you know, to suck on so that they don't feel that feeling of, you know, that dehydration and dryness in their mouth. Uh, apart from that, you guys know sodium is going to lead to neuro symptoms, low sodium levels. And as a result, patient can go into, I told you, right? Irritability, irritability, headache, seizure, you know, all those situations. So this means the patient can fall. So this means you want to implement the fall precaution on those patients. And you want to be very, very careful about this. Apart from that, you guys will be doing fluid balance. You are checking the electrolytes on those patients, right? So you are teaching them the safety measures primarily. And of course, it's a collaborative effort, right? It's not like the, like, you know, it's just the one discipline who's looking after the patient, but we are looking after the patient. It's a multidisciplinary approach so that we can keep them comfortable and safe while we are treating their SIADH. So I hope I made your life simple and like not complicated, but let's just review the case study here, example case study, and uh, let's just see. A 72 years old woman with a history of small cell lung cancers present to the emergency department with the confusion, severe nausea and muscle cramp. Oh my God, look at the sodium level, my friends, 118. And I hope you guys know what's the normal sodium, 135 to 145. Serum osmolarity is 250, which is also low. And the urine osmolarity is this much. So based on these findings, the doctor have made the diagnosis that the lady is suffering from SIADH. So now, what do you guys think is the initial treatment? Yes, I've already mentioned it. So you can include the fluid restriction, remember? Then we can also assess her sodium levels. You know, we want to make sure that, you know, in these patients, if you will restrict the fluid, the sodium level will also start getting corrected. But if it is not correcting, then you guys know we can give hypertonic solutions but we want to be careful about it you can also give patient oral sodium pills however we can also use pharmacological treatment like tolvaptan and then other medications which are vasopressin receptor antagonist medications okay so this is how you can treat those patients so this is your example question i want you guys to take a photo of it and I want you guys to put the answer under this video because I want to make sure that you guys are studying it if you're making this video, okay? So this is your case. A 65-year-old patient presents with a confusion, headache, and nausea. This is the lab result. Serum osmolarity is 260, and the urine sodium is 30 milli equivalents per liter. What is most likely the diagnosis? And what is the primary intervention for the patients with SIADH? So I need the answers in the comment section from you guys. Okay, and last but not the least, lots of students they ask me like, Taran, um, do we use lithium for the treatment of SIADH? So my friends, no. In uh, Canada, like, you know, I have worked here. So mostly you would see the first line of treatment is never lithium. We might use lithium for SIADH, but that has to be a very, very special case scenario. And lithium is a very special drug. And you guys know, primarily we use it in a it, it's called as a mood stabilizer, right? So you know that we use it in the bipolar patients and stuff like that. However, there are some very specific case scenarios where you use the lithium, but lithium is actually not for SIADS. So I hope you guys understood and uh, let me know how, if you guys understood about SIADH and if you have more questions and also let us know what else you guys want to learn and we'll be very happy to make that video for you.